welcome back to another unboxing. The first one is 2024. Yay! And if you're new here, welcome, welcome. We are doing anime figure unboxing reviews and also manga hauls and everything that's a little bit related to it. So if you like this kind of content, maybe considering subscribing, liking or commenting, it would help the channel out. And with this, I also want to thank all the new subscribers, all my old subscribers. Thank you, thank you. We finally reached 700 subscribers. Just a few more <laughs> to go to 1000. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> anyway, as I said, today we will do an unboxing of a very amazing figure that has been postponed for a whole year. I now finally have her in my hand and I couldn't be happier and I'm talking about a figure from the amazing artist Neko and it's a default slender samurai here she is a very big I have to say I quite like the design of the box especially we got a very very big picture of Neko's art from the samurai and oh I really love my technical girls and I'm so happy to finally have her. <laughs> I love the Force Land series and yay! I'm still waiting on my Hammer Nacelle. I know that the second version from this character, the Lanze Reiter, Lanze Reiter is already out. So let's take a look together on this one. So let's open her. I will do it from the bottom because that's the fastest way <laughs> and I don't need to cut the box. And we are greeted with instructions, we will see if we need them. Plasticky smell like always and here we have her in her plastic and as you can already see she comes with two heads one has the mask on and one not which I'm glad for because then I won't need to fiddle around with the mask on her face and we also got an ugly little support rod for her spots I think so yeah let's get her out I need my cutter which I didn't put here <laughs> come back I got my cutter so let's cut her open and what was your last figure that you received after a very very long waiting time? Let me know, I would be interested. So let's crack her open. But careful, the base is already falling out. I will do this on the bottom, <laughs> on the floor. Here we have the base, a very cool base, focus, yes. Looks like concrete, if it would focus, no. We have two metal rods, obviously it's hollow and plastic, but yeah, you get the idea, looks fantastic. A bit of shading, I think, yeah. A little bit of weathering, a little bit of shading, looks good nice very very nice the next item that fell immediately into your hand are the swords oh which are huge i don't know if you can see this oh they look amazing how the light reflects from them the details of the sheaths be careful with this i think that's where she getting attached to her oh gosh i love it i love it the red is a very nice dark muted color even have some kind of gradient if you take a look it's uh, lighter in the middle and darker on the outside and overall the attention to detail is stunning Ooh. Ooh. let's take a look at her second head just a brief one i will do obviously a lot of b-rolls but look at the layering of the hair the shading is amazing her face is stunning be careful with the flimsy hair super cute here she is let's remove this one from her back 
Careful. She's so big. Look at her next to my head. It's also big. One seven scale by wing. Yeah, by wing, not wings. By wing. Gosh, she's amazing. So putting her together is probably super simple. Oh gosh, <laughs> she has a broken back as well. <laughs> Let me. How do I get this on camera? Like, oh my gosh, she is pushing her belly out. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Let's put her together. Yeah, let's put her together. Okay, I'm back. I assembled her. Three words. Beautiful, magnificent, awesome, and basically false lemma samurai. <laughs> I would love to say her assembly was easy, but in a way it is easy, but also not. So first off, you put her on the base, which is straightforward. You don't have to pull the legs or anything, but it's a freaking tight fit. So I had really struggled to put her on the base and I still didn't get her to sit very flush onto it. One leg is no problem to push it down. The other leg is obscured by her skirt or overflap or whatever you want to call it. And you can't really grip it because I didn't want to push the skirt. It's a bit from her neck away and it was kind of hard the other leg and so that was painful to put on the base she sits very sturdy i dread the day that i have to remove her from the space <laughs> i hope the day never comes <laughs> or at least not in the near future because i have no idea how to pull her from the space she sits on it so so securely and, and tight she sits so tight on it it's uh yeah, it will be a struggle to remove it. Then, to put her in her swords, you first off have to remove her arm. And while doing that, I noticed that at least mine sample, you could remove her arm armor. If you can do this with your figure itself, I would highly recommend it. Pull this out beforehand, then pull out the arm. Believe me, it will make it easier in the step when you have to put the arm back in. Because then, you just see three little holes on her little half skirt where you have to push in the pegs of the swords. Easy enough, you align it, you begin with the one on the bottom first and then you just simply push it. Push it into her holes until it fits nice and snugly. You have to move it around a little bit in the beginning to really fit in other two pegs from the straps but after this was quite easy I have to say and it sits securely then it's time to put in the arm again and that's where another struggle began because first off you have to find the right hole for the arm which is a hassle in and of itself and get the angle right when you have the angle right you have to consider you want to have her hand holding the sword and not resting on it. and i have to say i couldn't find the right angle to do this in front of camera so i had to do it off camera but i eventually got it you have to move her hand slightly from above slide it onto the sword first before you put it into her arm socket Try and error, be patient, because I didn't want to break her thumb and have another broken phalanger like with my arm. Last figure, so take your time, be patient, wiggle around and then move carefully and then you have her arm in finally and at the last step you put in her armor again and it makes it really easy or more easier if you remove her armor, her arm armor before you put in her arm in contrast to when you have it on it because then you have no real angle to push her arm in. Anyway, I managed to do it and then you can also remove her head and exchange it with the other hand and this was another struggle. So wing, you have really tight fits. Just move, wriggle her head around until it pops off and then you can put in the other head. The only problem is the other head has a little deformation of her hair strands. While the original head which she comes attached to, which is the one with the mask, didn't have this. 
and so you have to be careful when you move on the other head that you maybe heat before you put on the head maybe heat a little bit the hair strands so that they don't snap off and fit nicely um, push them around and then I had to struggle to put her head on like oh gosh it wouldn't fit and after looking at it, after removing the head again and putting on the head that she has now with the mask I noticed there's just a lot of excess mold on the maskless face so that's why it wasn't way 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 tighter fit than this one anyway I managed to do it just a comparison between with the mask and without the mask I personally prefer the mask but she also looks very good without the mask so overall I just think the whole composition with the mask on looks way way neater than without it because I do have to say the pink stands out quite a bit in contrast especially to the dark red but otherwise um, whatever you prefer more and I personally prefer her with the mask. Let's talk just a bit about the figure because it's also a review not only an unboxing and her face is gorgeous with or without the mask i can say that they did an amazing job with her hair although i have to say it's a bit better or refiner on the mask glare face than on the one with the mask but overall the mask is stunning i love the color of the metal i love if you take a closer look at the mask itself there's a thin thin space in the mask which kind of makes it look like the mouth is open and this space is filled sculpted filled with a darker material which makes it kind of look like grizzle I, I don't know uh, this kind of attention to detail is amazing one of the features that I really like I also love the red cordial which they didn't skimp out on the details First and foremost, everything on this figure has so so much sculpted detail. Now I know why they have taken one year or pushed her back for one more year because this attention to detail for every copy that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work, and that makes her price, which was quite high, really really worth it. So the money that they poured in or that you poured into this figure, she really is worth this money. I wouldn't wait on her if I were you. Anyway, back <laughs> to the face. I'm always switching around. I really have to do something about this habit. Anyway, they have sculpted the Cordles the red band very good. A lot of details in it. Her ID cords are stunning and the hair color has some shading on it, which also looks good. Sure, some strands on the top of her head are very thick, but overall stunning looks like the artwork from Neko 10 points. When you look at her colors, we had a we have a lot of dark colors in it, like black, dark metal gray, gray, lighter gray, lots of gray, darker black, help lighter black. So there's a lot of blacks in it and they still manage to shade it to a level of perfection that it's amazing. I don't think there's a lot of shading on it, but what's there is enough. It's in the right places, it's in the creases, it's in the folds, it's there where it's supposed to be. And I also love the finishing of the metal parts of her armor, of her harnish, of everything that she's wearing. They did different shading techniques for the different elements, like her armor on the arm has some gradient in it. Everything is sculpted, so every detail that you see on her, which is a lot, a lot of details, is sculpted. We have little indents we have some screws we have little tassels we have some protruding artistic formations on her arm plates we have the different metal components which makes up her armor we have golden little screws or I don't know there are some yellow golden details in it which are very minimal which look stunning her belts her fastening of the belt Everything is so detailed. She has some, some chain metal in her arms, under her arm armor, which are two different colors. One is white and one is black. Both of it amazing detail. Everything is sculpted. If you touch it, you can feel it. And I love the claps. I love everything. Every single detail. Just take a look at this b-roll. It's so so amazing. She has interestingly two different kinds of leg wear. One has a front 
which is black and the back side is more of a gray color which is connected to screws and then we have the other one which is more of an armor type like one armor is attached to her, to her leg to her upper leg while the knee and everything underneath is protected by something like a sleeve which looks stunning you can't get a very good view on it because of the overskirt that she's wearing which by the way has some golden details on it and at first i thought they painted it but if you take a closer look in, in certain angles you will see that it's a decor and not painted which is totally fine it's black on the outside and then the inside is this very velvety sculpted inlay like you can see on an, on an emperor or on a king the, I, I don't know how this technique is called or how this kind of material is called but that's what it reminds me of it looks a little bit like a cushion of course sculpted it has cute little details at the end and is stunning it's very stunning and when we take a look at her hands we have red gloves and also certain red tendons which are bound on her armor the inside of her gloves are black and overall the sculpture of her hands with the armor is amazing all the movable parts which makes it look so realistic of course it's attributed to Neko's art which is very detailed but to see it translated into 3D on a 17 figure stunning I'm just blown away by this level of detail on this figure never seen a figure that's so worth her price than this one and they didn't skip out on any details be it on her sword like I said that I pulled them out amazing attention to detail I can just repeat myself these swords look amazing and on the swords you have to put the little support rod which kind of has a meeting point and kind of doesn't so I don't know how time will treat this figure if it will stack but it's nice that they put it in anyway and it sees through the support rod so it's not like you see or, or distracts too much to be honest of course she's a shelf hugger with the extruding blade that she has i also think that her one leg stands kind of funny has an interesting weave <laughs> if you could say but uh, funny i don't know what else to say just enjoy the b-roll if i still have some left because she is so so worth her price and I hardly I, I can't find anything to critique her except maybe the hair it's the only kind of lagging point I have to say uh, because everything is very dark and her hair is very very bright but if you take a really look at the artwork from Neko I will have to say it's like the artwork maybe the gray parts on her outfit weren't there as it was in Neko's art, they are a bit lighter than Neko's artwork was, as it was even darker, but overall perfect translation. I love the artwork, it's a lot of times very hard to then meet the 3D expectation of an artwork that you really really love, but she met it. I will give her a 10 out of 10. High recommendation for me if you like this kind of figure. She's worth her price, she's big. She's very big for 1.7. I don't have a figure next to me to compare her to. Well, I do. Wait, that's another figure I haven't shown, so a little sneak peek. She's also 1.7 by Fat, and I mean, come on, you can already see that she's taller. Sure, the face is a bit bigger on this one, and he's overall thicker, but that's typical Fat. Yeah, okay, maybe. <laughs> okay, maybe she's not that big but she has a good size for 1.7 she's quite thin but oh i love her i really love her can't say anything bad about her she was just a hassle to put together but if you take your time and be patient you will be fine i know you will please tell me what you think about her do you have her in her collection do you plan to pick any of the others up i would recommend it she's worth her price i hope hennes nathel will turn out just as great I just know that the Lancer Reiter didn't turn out as good. I didn't read so many good comments about her, but then again, it doesn't mean anything because in the end, you usually only comment when you have something to tell others about, I think. It's always more easy to tell the negatives than the positives, but she's a 10 out of 10. 
love her tell me what you think about her and that's basically it with my review again way too long as always but i have to gush about her i'm so happy i waited so long for her so don't forget to comment like and subscribe it helps out the channel thank you thank you for watching i wish you a great day week day night morning whenever you're watching this and i will catch you in the next one until then bye bye Thank you.